Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. So after a lot of hard work, we finally established a price target for 2025. If you missed that video, click on the link above. There's also a link below for you to view the model and download it yourself. It was pretty much based on a scenario if everything goes well for Tesla and comes to fruition how they expect. But what is it they say about God laughing when you make plans? So I wanted to explore the price point if a few spanners were thrown into the works and see what comes out. And yes, on the other side, this is Tesla. We could end up seeing some huge breakthroughs between now and 2025 that could increase production even further. We don't know, but that would be beyond speculation. But remember, the numbers are meant to be big because in case you didn't get the memo, we are transitioning the entire world off their addiction of fossil fuels. This is a huge job. And in case you can't tell, there's no other company doing this really to the level as Tesla is. And even if any other company did decide to, then it's not an overnight job. It takes years to scale up. One other thing I'd like to say first is why not assign a probability to this bull case scenario? Say if it's only a 10% chance that the bull case hits and we reach a $15,000 stock price or the equivalent of about 25 times return, then that is still an asymmetric investment. In other words, the chance of it occurring outweighs the return. And that's just one outcome. There may be a 20% chance it still hits $10,000. If you like asymmetric investing, then Tesla has all the signs. Okay, so let's explore our bear scenario. Well, given that the target for Tesla is three terawatt hours by 2030, and according to Elon, they should most likely achieve that before then, then what if we just add one year onto our 2025 target and call it a 2026 target? or two years and call it a 2027 target. Tesla is showing signs to be on track eventually to do these numbers. All the wheels are in motion. The factories are being built as we speak. The Model 2 is in the design studio. The lithium and nickel are coming out of the ground. Even if Tesla are a little late to arrive at these numbers by a year or two, the fact they will achieve it is life-changing for all of us. And sure, we love to dream and fantasize about such an event like that, that's why people buy lottery tickets. Except for a Tesla lottery ticket, you get to hold on to it for a lifetime and it has a much higher chance of hitting. But how about we still scale back these numbers somewhat to see what happens if things don't go quite according to plan. Okay, let's take a look at what might happen in a recession. Well, there'll be less buyers of a Tesla's current models, but it's possible that Tesla may have launched their Model 2 by this stage, which is a car that might actually thrive in a recession due to its low cost. Tesla has enough cash to keep them going through any major economic downturn anyway. But the thing is, although Tesla does, the other internal combustion manufacturers do not. And not only that, the legacy automakers have astronomical levels of debt. In a recession, it would be likely that interest rates have risen. Now, if consumers are no longer buying cars, and that's what happens in the auto industry, it's a cyclical industry. And if they have lots of debt with rising interest rates, then I would think they may have trouble surviving altogether, unless they're bailed out. But the currencies are weakened enough already, so that might not be an option. And even if it was, people don't want to buy their cars. So is it possible that in a major recession, Tesla will simply knock out all their competition? Not just legacy autos, but potentially EV startups too. A lot of capital equipment is required in getting EV companies up and running to a serious level. In a recession, capital dries up. And if they weren't making any profits before, then that's the end. But who knows, perhaps Apple might buy Lucid Motors and finally get a foot in the EV game. Tesla's entire business is riding on the 4680 batteries. They aren't being used in any cars as of yet. We haven't seen them tested in the field yet. Really, the entire business is riding on this one product. We've seen delays in the Model S Plaid Plus from late 2021 to mid 22. But this product wasn't put together overnight and it wasn't created by Tesla alone. Tesla required battery specialist companies like Highbar Systems and Maxwell Technologies and have been working alongside battery maker Panasonic for years. In addition to that, we're led to believe that Tesla literally have the best battery engineers in the world for this task. So fingers crossed it works out. There could be a global shortage of semiconductors and every Tesla needs microchips. But it sounds like Tesla have secured a good partnership with Samsung for this scenario so they should have good control over their chip supply. And I know we're supposed to factor in the competition and the FSD will be a commodity and people will think that FSD will eventually be standard on all cars, just like ABS. But I'm not sure FSD will be a commodity. 
We're told that Intel's mobile eye will catch up to Tesla, but I don't see how. They aren't collecting anything like as much data. And even if the competition can create FSD with or without LiDAR, and it doesn't mean it's as good as Tesla's, not all FSDs are equal. Tesla's will likely bring you to your destination faster and safer. Anyway, I'm trying to bring up some scenarios that might affect Tesla negatively, but I seem to have a rebuttal for each one. So let's just play of the numbers to see what valuation we arrive at if the numbers aren't as good as what we think they'll be. This will also be a good lesson on how to use our model. So let's start by working out how many vehicles Tesla will be making in 2025. Previously I had Tesla at 1.2 million for 2021, which you could argue is on the high side, but remember we had 180,000 in Q2 2020, which is 720,000 scaled up for the year. 2021 already has the addition of the Model Y Shanghai, and later in the year we have Berlin and Texas. Although the last two being later in the year, their sheer size will contribute significantly. So if we reduce the 2021 number to 1 million, I feel like that is a bare scenario. I want to do this without just putting low numbers in for the sake of it. And sure, there could be something that goes disastrously wrong in the Berlin factory and production doesn't start until 2022, but let's assume their factory at least opens and works, just like all their Shanghai factories did. Then for 2022, I think Tesla and Berlin alone should be around 2 million units, but we've not really been told any official numbers on the capacity of these factories, which in my opinion, is really gonna offer us a lot of insight as to valuation when we finally find out. So let's say that in 2022, Tesla are at 2 million units total. I mean, that's still 100% growth from 2021. Elon has said growth for 2021 and 2022 will be much higher than 50%, but then he's given us the 50% growth number from there. So let's use that for the rest of the numbers. And with that, we're at 6.75 million cars for 2025. I mean, at this stage, we would have fully ramped up Model 2 factory, but these are the numbers we have. So now we can decide where to allocate the 6.7 million cars. Our bull case has Fremont at 1 million, the current capacity is at 600,000, and that's without cell to vehicle or 4680 batteries or even the Gigapress. So if we only see Model S and X ramp up to 120,000 and Model Y and 3 to 650,000 spread equally, we get a total of 770,000 from Fremont. Shanghai has a current capacity of 450,000, so if we see a similar increase in production of 25% there, we're up to about 550,000. Let's say 300,000 Model 3s and 250,000 Model Ys. Just remember, Elon's saying they think they can increase production velocity by 10 to 100 times too, not 20 to 25%. Despite the claimed 250 gigawatt hours for Berlin, we're going to keep that factory at a 1 million capacity. And let's say they don't extend the Model 3 factory just yet. If Texas is just on 500,000 Model Ys and 3s and only 250,000 Cybertrucks, and then only perhaps 10,000 semis, and the Roadster was already fairly minimal, so we can leave that at 5,000, as they will have great margins per kilowatt hour battery. And let's say the van is yet to be in production. How about the Shanghai Model 2 factory is only large enough for 2 million models a year? And Tesla only build one more factory that has a capacity of 1 million cars in production by 2025. That brings us to a total of 6.5 million units, about what we're looking at reaching. It's also 403 gigawatt hours of batteries. That gives us a total of $260 billion revenue, bringing it to nearly $80 billion gross profit. So Tesla required 400 gigawatt hours of batteries for their cars, but what if they were only capable of producing 300 gigawatt hours themselves in-house and their suppliers another 200 gigawatt hours, meaning there was only a remaining 100 gigawatt hours for energy. This is one quarter the battery supply we had in our bull scenario. That's a huge difference. Rather than go through each supplier to save time, I've just updated the table. So we have 100 gigawatt hours remaining for energy. Again, I've adjusted the table to save time and reduce heat pumps from 1 million to 200,000, leaving a gross profit for energy of $16 billion. Now, FSD is a service customers purchase already, but what if Tesla are really stuck and haven't made many improvements, despite them having something like 30 to 50 times as much data on the road? So we'll put the price back to $10,000, add a new row called deferred revenue, as they're not able to realize 100% of the income, as FSD is not feature complete, and we will assign 50% to that. We have the new number of Teslas sold, and let's say only 10% are purchasing FSD now. We have $5 billion gross profit, down from 30 billion. And robo-taxis, well, this is an easy one. We remove all the income. And not only that, but we'll also say it actually won't be part of Tesla's business. 
Perhaps Tesla weren't able to sort out insurance worldwide and only 20% of customers use Tesla insurance, profit going from just over 2 billion to just under one. He has total revenue of $322 billion down from 1.2 trillion, a quarter of what we had previously. And gross profit from 423 billion to just a measly 100 billion, again about one quarter. Okay, obviously costs will come down too, so I've readjusted those. And due to growth not being as good, and perhaps interest rates aren't as low, then a P-E ratio of 30 might be more likely. And if the hope of robo-taxis has perhaps dwindled completely too, then we have a stock price of $871. Now this really is more of a worst case scenario. And I know you were hoping for around $1,500, but we're likely in a huge recession in this scenario. And bear in mind that Ford's stock price went to $2 after the global financial crisis. It was once at a high of nearly $100. So the fact that Tesla's stock price is still higher than it is today, with the total removal of all hope of robo-taxis, might I add, and Tesla's own battery supply being only about what they think they can produce from Berlin alone, it's not so bad. And remember, there is likely a 10% chance that we could hit the bull case too. But this bear case, I want to assign about only a 3% chance to. Anyway, seeing is believing, and we've just heard that Tesla are delivering semi-trucks to PepsiCo as early as this year. And really, we're sure that Tesla can ramp up more than 25% in their factories over the next four years. But as you can see, it will all come down to battery production. So that's the thing to keep an eye on. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.